Hey, what's up guys and welcome to the Phil Studio. Today is a great day because we're going to do some chemistry and harvest our own crystal to create some piezo microphone. So when I started the channel about three years ago, uh, I made a video on how to create your own piezo contact microphone. Uh, basically, it was just me showing you how to solder two wires to a piezo disc element and then create a contact microphone to capture sound from your acoustic guitar or acoustic instrument. Honestly, it was probably one of the simplest projects I've presented on the channel. Uh, and recently, someone uh, made a comment on that video and it gave me the idea um, to harvest my own crystal um, after some research I realized it would be fairly easy to create my own Rochelle salt crystal so today this is something we're going to do I will let Nelek Newton do the experiment and explain most of the stuff he's doing because I'm not sure I understand everything and after we'll bring back the crystal to the lab and do some audio testing and comparison between the homemade uh, crystal and the manufactured uh, piezo disc so I hope you'll enjoy that experiment hey hey hi guys um, what's up I am Nelek Newton and today we'll harvest some uh, Rochelle salt crystal. Um, Field asked me to to create some in the lab because he want to create some piezo crystal disc um, for for the studio or to record some stuff. So uh, fortunately, um, creating or harvesting. Rochelle salt crystal is fairly easy. It requires only uh, three really common ingredient. First of all, which is probably the most common ingredient anyone can have access to this resource, it is water. Uh, the, the purist will use pure water or distilled water and for this in it is better because there are no mineral, no chloride, no fluor into the water but for this experiment I will use regular tap water to show you that it is possible to do so and it will also give you the choice either to use the regular tap water or the distilled water the second ingredient is pretty common too but is not available in the grocery stores as a, as a direct material to buy and it is the um, sodium bicarbonate um, in the experience we will use sodium carbonate which can be made with the regular baking soda or sodium bicarbonate uh, fortunately, it is really, really easy to create carbonate from bicarbonate sodium and I will show you and explain quickly how it is made. First of all, sodium bicarbonate. Sodium bicarbonate is also known in the kitchen as the baking soda. The chemical formula for this is N A H C O 3 By simply eating the sodium bicarbonate, we can obtain the sodium carbonate, which is N A 2 C O 3. Sodium carbonate is mostly used in the industry for soap. But we're not going to make soap today. By eating sodium bicarbonate, we will obtain sodium carbonate. The reaction starts and occurs at around 50 degrees Celsius, so you don't need a special oven or anything particular. You can do it on, on, a, on your oven easily. You have to watch it and stir it often because you don't want to burn 
the bicarbonate you want to eat it and you stir it and I, as the process goes on you will see some water evaporate and some CO2 evaporating for last and probably most important ingredient for this experience is a special product called cream of tartar it was the first time I bought this product but it is available at the grocery store you can find it in the section with the other spice or the flour and I heard it was a pretty expensive product but I've paid $198 dollar, Canadian dollar for 30 gram you will need around 44 gram per per 44 gram for 100 milliliter water and in my case I want to do the double which means we're gonna need 88 gram of cream of tartar and luckily we have three bags of 30 which make around 90 gram of cream of tartar so it's pretty much accurate we'll make 200 milliliter of the solution and I will show you the process because you have to eat and boil some stuff but don't freak out right away for those who are interested the cream of tartar the cream of tartar is also known as, as potassium bitartrate The chemical formula for this is pretty complex, I will write it down if you are interested, but I'm not an expert with the cream of tartar. So this is all the explanation and the theories you will do for now, and the rest is really practical. So first step, we will create the sodium carbonate out of the sodium bicarbonate. Since we're doing this experiment, I will do a bigger batch to collect the surplus and I will keep it in a glass jar for further experiment. Let's go! First of all, take a Pyrex or just a container, a measurement container and I will pour 500 milliliter of bicarbonate sodium. Put it into your casserole and turn the heat to medium 5. 5 is good, you don't want to burn the stuff, you just want to eat it. And as it will eat, I recommend that you stir often because this will help to evenly eat all of the material. Like I mentioned, the reaction will take place at around 50 degrees Celsius, so make sure the, um, the baking soda is not burning, and when it starts to smell a little bit the cake, uh, it's time to stir. So I'm still stirring, stirring the product. Um, and by the way, I highly recommend that you wear protection glasses during this process because the powder is really volatile um, and really hot and you don't want it to, to you don't want to receive some in your eyes so make sure you wear the protection and even glove could be a good idea because this powder is getting really hot right now I'm just realizing that 400 milliliter of bicarbonate of sodium bicarbonate is a big quantity and will take forever to um, to react so if you want to go with a smaller quantity it's up to you here we we have the big boy working really hard with us in the field studio now I understand it started to smell to smell a little bit like the earthworm because it's it's raining outside If 
you start seeing some bubble this is a good sign this is just the water and the co2 the co2 evaporating make sure you steer as it will help the water to evaporate out of the substance So as you can see, it was so long that I cranked up a little bit uh, the, the temperature. You could see it was, it was uh, the max, ma maximum temperature, which is, uh, which is good for the transformation. Look, this is what I was waiting for, the bubble. So continue to steer. So we're done with the bubbling and as the heat continue and the water evaporate you will start to feel that the the powder is getting a little bit a little bit more dense and which means you have to continue stirring a bit and to ensure that all the water is evaporated and this is like pretty dense right now it's a dense powder so i will remove it from the heat and we want it to cool down naturally, normally, and to ensure that it will cool down and to keep to keep the the water, we will put the lid over. So meanwhile, while this is cooling down because it has to cool down a little bit. Uh, before we put it in our, our jar, we will identify the jar. So let's do this. Let's write sodium. Carbonate. And if you want to be really safe, you can write poison. Um, because it is, I don't think this is poisoned, but when you write poison on something, there is really much less chance that someone end up eating it, just to be safe. So we're gonna hit print. And now we have our container ready to, to contain the... Um, the sodium carbonate which is still cooling down and yes put the lid so to, to keep the moisturize the, the to keep the moist okay so now that we have the sodium carbonate watch out because it's still really hot do not take it right away um, we are filling just one fourth of the pot and put it to around five because you just want the water to simmer a little bit you don't want it to boil that hard we're going to do a water bath now take your pyrex measurement cup and add 200 millimeters of water and if you can this is the best part we're going to add 80 88 grams of cream of tartar or mm, well 88 if you can in my case it will be more like 90 gram once all the cream of tartar is in the water this is the cool part you will um, stir and mix the solution um, you, you can use um, a spoon but it's way cooler to have a little glass agitator like that so mix it good eh? and add it to the water bath here it fits perfectly we're really lucky and we have to wait a little bit until the water gets hotter. Make sure you you stir you stir because you want to mix that powder with the water. And get your sodium carbonate nearby because you will need it really soon. And I will show you how to mix it properly because there is a chemical reaction happening when you add the sodium carbonate to the tartar mixture and you don't want to fill it too quickly because it will make a lot of, of bubbles uh, just a little tricks just keep stirring while the water is getting hotter 
uh, or it will create some clump um, the mixture will just clump and become really hard to, to steer so mix it up often while the water bath is getting hot and when you start to see the bubble uh, you, it's time that you you start doing the real chemical stuff here okay so now the water bath is at a good temperature so we stir the mixtures we stir the mixture and this is when you will want to take make sure it will steer because you don't want any clump uh, down down the mixture then this is where we, where we will take half of a tablespoon of the carbonate don't go too quickly don't put too much because you will see there is a reaction here and you stir this is a chemical reaction make sure you don't breathe the, the gas out of this and then you stir a little bit and we will have to repeat the process a lot because the goal is to obtain a clear yellow mixture out of this milky uh, substance so keep the water hot but not boiling this will help the solution to be created we, we just need to repeat the process um, until the water get really clear and you can start seeing the water uh, losing a bit of its uh, white tone I really like this chemical reaction because it you need to steer because b before it really happens look at all these bubbles they are they are beautiful it's a seven up it, it's like seven up yeah make sure you steer it well a really big reaction and it's still bubbling I think we're starting to get the substance to harvest the the wretched salt crystal and uh, keep in mind that this is a liquid and we will have to filter oh you saw I had some uh, sodium carbonate and nothing happens which means I think this liquid is ready uh, to be filtered but before we filter uh, I, I will use a coffee filter it's a bamboo filter to filter the the powder and the liquid we just want to keep the liquid but before this happen uh, we will need to let let it cool down a little bit I'm just gonna add a little bit more to see if the reaction is complete yeah it's complete there are no more bubbles so it's okay because the excess carb sodium carbonate will be filtered into the, the the coffee filter so turn down the heat and remove the solution from the oven okay so now it's the time to filter the mixture Right. It, it will also help to remove all the imperfection from from the liquid sorry I uh, was out of camera so And, and this is not like a dangerous experiment but but since we're working with with eat um, it's always a good a good idea to be really careful and wear the the protection to protect from the the heat of of the liquid and also the the, the powder which get really really hot so you should end up with a, a clear and clean liquid like this one so this liquid when it will cool down 
to the room temperature should give you some Rochelle salt crystal. Um, I've seen a lot of people just harvesting directly in this container uh, but since Phil wanted to make some uh, piezo disc microphone which are really thin I think I will choose a tighter component and once it's cooled down enough I will pour some a little bit of water in each of the compartment um, and for your pleasure I will add some colorant to them uh, I, I, I hope this won't change the property of the crystal uh, but they just it's just for fun and since we're gonna put just a little 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 flask of water I think that the crystal harvested are gonna be really thin but this is something we will see in uh, about one day or two so when you want to cool down your uh, liquid it is recommended to cool it slowly and naturally so don't put it in the refrigerator uh, I don't know what it will do uh, maybe we could try with a small amount um, I will try it with a small amount and let you know um, at the end of the video how it goes okay so now it's time for the real chemistry stuff so take some liquid Make sure your container is clean and add a thin layer of liquid. Okay, so guys, I'm really excited. We have the big science, the big science going on here. We have um, this container with the liquid we have the green crystal here we're gonna have the orange crystal the red crystal the purple crystal which is pretty dark and we have the blue crystal and I had some liquid left so I put it in this container in case uh, the other this one would not work um, all we have left to do now is to cover the container with a soft tissue and leave it in a cool, a cool and ventilated area um, we put this to to uh, to to to, um, to ensure that there is no dust coming into our crystal so you have to store this in a cool place for about one to two days and make sure you check them regularly because you want to see the creation of the crystal okay guys so I'm, I'm really sad because it's been three days in the fridge and there's still no crystal so I think it was a messed up batch and uh, I've noted uh, what could be the possible problem so I'll do another batch and I'll explain at the end of the experience um, what error to avoid and some tips and tricks Okay guys, so this time I am pretty sure this is going to work because uh, the solution has been into the fridge for like an hour only and we can see the formation of a crystal ear. So I'm really excited and I really like the shape of this one. It could be great for um, a piezoelectric microphone. I think the cats agree to. Yes, you you agree with the shape of the crystal? Oh yeah, so after a week of hard work, uh, Nelek Newton finally managed to harvest a nice batch of crystal. But like he mentioned, he messed up the first batch of Rochelle Salt crystal and he sent me some recommendations in order to have a perfect batch every time, so take these tips in notes and you'll be able to harvest your own Rochelle salt every time. So first of all, the choice of water. Um, in the experiment he used the regular tap water 
uh, and he just recommend to use the distilled water when working with chemistry you just always want to use the the distilled water because you don't want to have some chlorine or fluor into your experiment and also the regular tap water may contain some mineral and you don't want them into your Rochelle salt crystal. Second of all, the cream of tartar. So the purity of the potassium tartrin may differ from a batch to another and it may contain some other stuff that you don't want so he said to just always put a little bit more cream of tartar to make sure that you'll be able to harvest the crystal. For the second batch which works really well uh, you use 250 milliliters of water for 150 gram of cream of tartar. And last and probably the most important tips you want uh, at the end, when you come up with the, the yellow transparent solution, like the last mixture before you pour it into the filter, he said, okay, so we're gonna let something like, uh, we're gonna let the liquid cool down and then pour it into the coffee filter. This was probably the worst mistake he could do. Because when the solution cools down, the crystal already started to form. So when you pour it into the filter, the crystal were too small to be seen with the eye, but they were too big to pass through the filter. So all the crystal ended up in the filter. And the solution you put in the fridge was just dry and could not harvest any crystal out of it. So in the next batch, what he did is that he eat up the solution one last time before he pour it into the coffee filter. And you want to make sure that the mixture is like uniform and then you can pour it into your filter and then you cool it down in the fridge and within an hour you should see the formation of the crystal. So we're going to take a look right now to the crystals. Okay, so this is the main batch that got harvested. Uh, as you can see, like there are some big chunk of crystal here. But we, you're gonna have to pull it out and dry them before you test them or do anything with them. Uh, we have a lot of small crystals, so we, I'm gonna test a batch of them and see if some are working or not. Uh, I'm not sure if this will work, but I really hope it will work and act as a piezo crystal. And this is like the other batch. Uh, that were used with less liquid. Here you can see there are a lot of salty chunk. Uh, they are all crystal in there. You can see there are some crystal in there too. Uh, the colored one, I'm not sure if it worked fine. We're gonna check this out. Like there are some tiny parts you can see, but it's just too small to be used uh, for any kind of experiment. But maybe these one could be used. I don't know. I'm going to do some tests and we have a big one here into the blue solution. Um, I don't know if it's going to work. I hope so. But we're going to test them and I'm going to show you how to use your, your scope to test the um, the crystal and we're going to compare the quality with another with a piezo I have here that I bought like all made uh, so um, we're gonna compare both the, the homemade piezo crystal and this piezo crystal so here I will present to you my setup so in the center you can see there is a small tiny crystal in there squeezed into this plastic clamp and here you have some copper band which uh, I soldered a, a black wire and on the other part I soldered a red wire this is to test with the scope and what I've used is this copper foil tape from uh, the fruit uh, yeah so it's really nice you just cut it the length you want 
and there's some adhesive uh, glue under and both sides are conductive uh, it's copper so you can solder directly on the uh, on the copper foil you can see it so we're gonna test it I'm gonna plug my my probe so it doesn't really matter the, the positive or the negative because you can switch it uh, afterward so I'm gonna plug it I'm gonna power up my scope and I'm gonna show you on a little screen the result so when you want to trigger the piezo make sure you don't use any conductive uh, part because you will just induce with your finger so much of your body noise and you don't want that you just want to to see if you can trigger the attack of your screwdriver or any other object you have so you would just hit it gently on the side here so I'm gonna use a small flat screwdriver here with an, an insulated grip or handle to make sure you don't induce the noise and when you hit it gently I'm gonna try to freeze the signal and show you this is the signal I managed to capture with the homemade piezo and then I'm gonna plug this piezo here and we're gonna see what kind of signal we can get I'm going to use the same probe in the same setting so you can see like <laughs> The signal is much stronger on the, the commercial piezo. Like the signal is really stronger. So we're back to the regular piezo here. I'm gonna show you the signal. when I hit the signal is much smaller um, but still it's working so we got something usable uh, and I think we could create a piezo microphone out of this I gotta figure out a way and this is the topic of the next episode and I know this is this was like a, a really long video but I really enjoyed making it and before we um, we leave uh, I wanted to show you the crystal on the microscope so let's go so here we go guys I've put this nice crystal the blue crystal um, near the scope the microscope I'm gonna put it down a little bit until we can see it on the screen okay so let's look at us at the screen here this is the Rothschild salt crystal you get some nice tint of blue uh, this screen is not really beautiful so I'll show you on that screen it's much better Okay, so, so guys, this is what concludes the video on how to harvest your own Rachel Salt Crystal. And in this video, we learned how to test them and make sure they could be used as a piezoelectric trigger. And next episode, like I mentioned, I'm going to create a piezo microphone, contact microphone and play some guitar and try to record sound with it. See you next time.